Thank you very much, Vero, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. It's early yet, but still we start. I would like to present to you the Green UR project, which is a project uh, which has been requested by the WHO European Center for Environment and Health in Bonn and is funded by a German minister, the German Ministry of uh, Environment and Climate and the Clean Air Coalition. Um, what we do here, we are investigating the impact of uh, land use on health and especially uh, focus on green spaces. You know, urban green spaces like parks are known to be beneficial to human health, but is sometimes quite interesting to better understand um, in which detail, level of detail at city level, how to deal with that. So what we have been doing, we have been developing a QGIS plugin, uh, which is still under development, but these are early results we wanted to present at the occasion of this conference here. And well, it's QGIS as already mentioned, but uh, underneath there's also the use of GrassGIS. So in this particular case, we are using both the APIs of uh, QGIS, Python APIs of QGIS and GRASS in order to do the computation. I will walk you through different uh, aspects and um, yeah, we will start with that. So the question is in the first place, where does it all come from? Our knowledge, uh, we are relying on uh, scientific literature here. This project is basically the idea to convert scientific literature into code. And so we have been uh, looking at uh, different articles. This has been done by the scientific team at WHO especially and our co-authors. And we were looking into uh, the connections between green space, especially urban green space and human health. And you see here some citations like an inverse association between the proximity to green space and all-cause mortality, means the more close you are, the less mortality you find statistically. Um, we have a consistent negative association between urban green spaces, exposure and mortality, heart rate and violence, and a positive association with attention, mood and physical activity. I'm citing this because there are citations, so I cannot uh, modify that. And eventually it's important that green space can benefit health because there are three general functions, reducing harm, restoring capacities and building capacities. So um, we are looking particularly at cardiovascular diseases. That is, for example, hypertension, ischemia, heart disease. We are looking at mental diseases like anxiety, stress, depression, and eventually at metabolic diseases, another family that is diabetes or obesity or respiratory diseases like uh, allergic rhinitis. So there's a lot of work still to be done, but there's a growing corpus of scientific uh, literature in this regard, which is uh, looking at the causal relationships between nature and health. And uh, well, there's a meanwhile agreed agreement between biopsych psychosocial better pathways linking green space to health uh, that is related to these three functions mentioned below. Okay, so this is uh, in a nutshell the foundation of everything. Um, since I told you we are developing a QGIS plug or, uh, plugin, I will now show, show the different aspects of this plugin, what you can do. Uh, you are initially presented um, with uh, uh, so let's say overall it's a wizard. Yeah? You are walked through the different aspects and you can go back and forth. You have some settings in the beginning where your data are and then which, uh, what do you want to compute. And here you can see uh, a choice of different things, life effect uh, on air pollution that is particulate matter for example, effects of noise, effects of temperature, effects on pollen and uh, tree module as well. And this is under the section Ecosystem Services. There's, there are others in this with that, which I will show partially later. Um, we're looking at health impact of mortality. Uh, under development, this is still really under development, morbidity on mental health, uh, dementia, reduced depression and stress, and stroke. This is, of course, pretty complex to analyze. And uh, we are using environmental data and then try to turn them into something related to these aspects. 
and eventually there's active transport, that means cycling and so on, which is also um, a topic here. So, concerning the, the mobility on mental health, this is, uh, let's say, a start on, um, for the discussion. Now, uh, the question is how much green space is available, one of those questions, for the population of a specific city. So I want to give some example here. This is a Maastricht city example. Um, data have been provided by Bram Osterbrück from Maastricht University. And in the first place, as always in a GIS, you define your study area um, and feed it with input data. So in this particular case, you have to, we use a vector map with the different districts of Maastricht. Maastricht and uh, you uh, upload this data through the let's say import the data, or register them through this uh, wizard, you pick the data set and then in the lower part you have also a population map which is needed and here you can either bring your own or we are also to some extent providing sample data uh, because it's not obvious for everybody to, to get all these kinds of data which we see here and later. You know there are different sources existing but things also have to be combined properly. So. The first question is, where is currently green space and how to get that? There are different options. One option is to use satellite data or aerial data with infrared channels so that you can compute the normalized differences vegetation index, that NDVI, that is kind of hello world of uh, remote sensing. Um, and then you can define a threshold because it also depends a bit on where you are. Uh, with this threshold we say okay everything above this threshold is green and everything below is not because the range of NDVI is from th theoretically minus one to plus one with uh, minus one not really existing but say small negative values are like water for example and then you have streets and covered soil and so on and then at some point the green vegetation starts with a maximum of plus one. So you use your threshold you can also naturally compare it since it's in QGIS to other uh, services like WMS you can put into the background and so on. Um, another option is to take data from OpenStreetMap, parks and gardens in case they are already digitized and uh, like this you can compute uh, the green space area of this particular city and here in the case of Maastricht uh, we get uh, this amount of uh, these results here. So that's not that complex, of course, and we move to the next. Now we look at the population. Uh, importantly, it depends on where people live. Population map are usually of coarser resolution, so we need to uh, generate the association to uh, the different districts here, and this is nothing else in a technical sense like zonal statistics, and like that you also get um, uh, respective map. So why is population important? Because we want to have the reachability to urban green space. Where are most of the people living, for example? Where is the next green space? What are the distances? And then we come into this context here. So reachability and which uh, amount of population has, an, has access to green space. So another topic is to compute how many deaths could be prevented due to the proximity to green spaces. Here you can say, okay, wow, this is already a quite, quite a wild assumption, but as mentioned before, um, we are looking at the scientifically described uh, correlation between green spaces uh, uh, on mortality. Uh, there's uh, again some citations here, which I will not uh, read to you, but uh, later on uh, at the end of the presentation, you have all the links to the different articles if you're interested. Um, importantly, the first paper here is a systematic review and a meta-analysis of longitudinal studies. So that is not a single study here, but it is looking at the entire corpus of scientific literature in this regard and then derived uh, different results here. All right, so with that we move on. Uh, all course mortality, so we use um, Again, our input data already taken and the mean NDVI. So with NDVI, you must imagine if you're in an area with seasonality, like here in, on the northern 
uh, hemisphere, Central Europe, wherever we are. You have winter, summer, and so on, and NDVI is naturally not uh, constant, so you can use, for example, different um, NDVI data sets over time and then average that out. And then on, this, uh, on top of this, we compute um, uh, the all course mortality, so the first step you can see here. And then we can look at the population data again and buffer the green space. So the question is, what is the reachability? And up there you see a number, maybe I have a mouse here, yes, um, 300 meters. So people tend to be lazy at some point, they will not walk easily one and a half kilometer to go to the next park. And we try to say here, um, Possibly 300 meters are doable. It depends on where you are, what temperatures are, and so forth. But that's why you can modify this value and then go and simulate another, another situation. OK, and going on with that, um, what are uh, prevented premature mortality cases? This is then computed here. There are different statistics computed uh, as well. Yeah, there's a help. Um, uh, also integrated. So what you do, you have seen we have this wizard style and here you can, can click on run analysis and look at the results. You need to interpret them of course. Uh, you can also go back, modify the parameters and go forth again um, to, to define uh, what you have. And mortality data you uh, of course also need. In this case we have 900 cases per 100,000, and this value is then in inserted here. So the idea is have to have it all uh, modifiable, because this is a tool uh, which aims at global usage. Naturally, you need to have the data, but uh, the data are statistically existing, and then you look up for this particular place in the world what the respective data are. So temperature, uh, for some of us it's pretty warm in Florence and um, this is, as you know, giving with uh, heat waves and so forth, giving quite an impact. This can also be studied here and trees and uh, green spaces are known to have cooling effects on uh, the respective surrounding areas where they are located and we uh, put this also into code in order to see the effect. So. Here we need a land use map. Uh, we are still in the Maastricht case and we wanted to compute from that the urban heat island effect. So with soil being sealed, um, you can see it pretty much also in this particular city where we are in Florence. There's a lot of stone and so on. It's heating up in daytime and in nighttime this effect continues because it's a slow change of temperature. Um, this may differ from where you are but uh, we use a land use map to then turn this into something which is related to uh, effects on temperature. So the land use maps here are a road map, paved surfaces, so impervious surfaces and buildings. And if you have those data, you can activate them and use them. And then we naturally need some weather data. They can be uh, defined here as a CSV table, for example, and you define which uh, columns contain, for example, wind speed, uh, the daily rural temperature outside, global radiation, and so on. Those data do exist, and we, of course, help uh, finding them. And then it depends on which resolution you have, um, uh, how that goes. So weather data look like this. You have a table, um, pretty simple. You have the date, you have the different parameters which are here. And then you simply tell, okay, this table, uh, this column goes here, this column goes there, and then you can go on with the computation. Um, you can compute here the uh, monthly mean temperature. Uh, we have uh, also a radius for soil sealing and so on, different parameters. And with this, then you get uh, the statistical effects. Okay, and then eventually, once we have prepared all our data, uh, the next point is to compute again the prevented premature mortality cases. And uh, you walk through this wizard and get the respective results. And here you can also Im include the uh, expected temperature change, so do 2 degrees of Celsius, for example, and then go and simulate what it means. 
So if you want to compute something, how would the city look like or what are the effects in 20 years from now with the current configuration but two degrees of increase of temperature? Or you say, okay, 1.5 uh, degree of Celsius degree we will make. You put 1.5 there and can simulate. So we have plenty of more functions like that. Uh, there's not the time uh, to go uh, through that uh, as I mentioned before, um, as a summary, we have this developed this, or we are developing this QGIS plugin. It's a beta version. Uh, we plan to publish it very soon. It's already in a hidden space, but um, let's say we need to have the authorization by WHO to make it really public. It will come, but it's a big organization, and this takes a bit of time. And of course, uh, since this is then. Well, computing quite important parameters like health-related data, uh, we also want to be sure that the outcome is uh, sufficiently correct. So correct in a sense that it is scientifically based. We need to do more uh, use cases in order to be sure that it, uh, the computation behave properly in different parts of the world. And um, well, through this, uh, we offer a standalone tool in a well-known uh, open source GIS uh, with methods for investigation on the relationship between green spaces and health impact. Um, it is fairly easy then to, uh, well, to use it in different places. We are already creating packages for different cities or so capitals like Kathmandu, Accra, and Ghana, and so on. Uh, this will be uh, open data, of course, and so we want to simplify things, and if you then work in a particular city but have one data set which is of better resolution or quality, then you can naturally, as you have seen before, replace it, Re replace it and use it. So we want to uh, release this plugin officially in uh, next year. Maybe we will have better testers. If you are interested, please let us know. We can discuss everything. Uh, we will implement more methods. Um, and uh, we have already tested it in some workshops, internal workshops or shops of WHO. The response was quite well, and uh, we, tend, uh, we will be comp uh, completing things. Here again, the funding acknowledgement, um, and eventually, just to tell you, these are the data references, uh, the data we have been using for this Maastricht case. So you see also uh, global data used here from European Commission, human, global human settlement layers, some are local. So you can combine things as needed. And here are the references of the papers which have been used in this uh, study. I thank you for your attention. The slides uh, will be available once I get uh, access to the keyboard again, uh, I guess later today on this website. And um, I thank you for your attention.